Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am going to my first Christmas do tomorrow and we have chosen a theme for this Christmas meet and we are doing 70s food and drinks. Uh, and I am in charge as always of the dessert, which I actually opted out to be. I love making desserts and taking it. So I uh, was looking what would be the good kind of 70s pudding to take for a party which we can share. And I thought, classic trifle. I love trifle. What's not to like? There is jelly, there is custard, there is cake, there is fresh cream. All delicious things layer upon layer. It looks stunning. It tastes amazing. Absolutely delicious. And also you can kind of pre-prepare it and then leave it in the fridge and then take it when you have to go to the party. So I don't have to go to the party till tomorrow. So I'm going to start it tonight so I can do one layer tonight one layer tomorrow morning and then finish it by evening. Uh, before that, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. Let's get cooking. So I just want to say that I have borrowed this bowl uh, from my friend. Obviously, I've got lots of bowls, but you need for trifle, you need something that is deep. If you can have like a slightly more open one, that's even better. But this will do for 10 people. We are 10 of us. So this should be a good quantity. And whatever is left can go back in the fridge and you can enjoy it in the next few days. I doubt there'll be anything left. But yeah, so I've borrowed this for one evening from my friend. So I am going to start with this bowl. Also, I just want to say I'm going to take some shortcuts here, my friends. I'm not going to make the cake from scratch. I'm not going to make the custard from scratch. I am going to use some kind of shortcuts just to make my life easy. So I'm going to start with 400 ml of just tap water. To this, I'm going to add 150 grams of caster sugar. Get the pan on heat. To this, I'm going to add juice of one lemon. Don't worry about the pips right now. We're going to sieve this mixture later in a bit. But just add the juice of the whole lemon to this and then let the sugar dissolve first. While that sugar is dissolving, I'm going to get a bowl. I've just got some cold tap water in here. And to this tap water, I'm just going to add six gelatin leaves. Make sure that the water is cold so that they soften up. I just need to get them ready for our sugar mix to make jelly. Once the sugar has dissolved, I have got a bowl of 500 grams of mixed berries. So there is red currant, black currant blackberry and there is strawberry and usually when you buy this mixed berry pack it is actually slightly cheaper as well and it has a more kind of a blend of flavor because of the four different berries so i'm just going to add that and then let this cook so that the berries soften up and start to break because we want to get those flavors out of the berries in the first place so this is now going to take a few minutes to come to a boil and once it's started to boil that's when you cook this on low heat for five minutes before the next step. There it is boiling away. And once you have given it uh, four to five minutes to kind of look it's softened up really nicely I can take it off the heat. So all I'm going to do is just pass this through a sieve and make sure that I've kind of pressed and got everything out like some pulp out of these berries look they're fully soft which is what we want and by crushing them and like squishing them you'll get all the lovely flavors from the berries not just the liquid and you'll just be left with the seeds which obviously we don't want in the trifle or in your jelly lovely flavors coming through so there is our liquid and you can see a little bit of the pulp from the berries. The gelatin leaves have softened up really nicely. So you just squeeze out any extra, extra liquid and then just drop them in here. And that will help set the jelly up. So that's six leaves. Go in. And then make sure that you stir this through so that the gelatin leaves dissolve. So now we can transfer it to this lovely trifle bowl uh, to make the base, the first layer of the trifle. And the sizzling noise that you can hear is not from the berries. I'm just making some chicken burgers for tonight's dinner. So that's going on on the side <laughs> while I'm preparing trifle for tomorrow. So yeah, like I said, that's the trifle bowl. 
and that goes all our jelly. Kind of don't want to spill it. Kind of don't have much choice in here. You just have to slide this down as neatly as possible. Oh, fabulous. Look at that. Wonderful. There it is. Right. So now this I'm going to leave outside the fridge because it's piping hot. I'm not going to put it in the fridge. But once it the steam's gone down and it's kind of uh, slightly cooled down, I'm going to put this in the fridge overnight to set. And then I'll do the rest tomorrow. Right. So the jelly is now in the bowl and I'm going to... And we've finished having dinner. <laughs> I'm going to do one more step before I close the kitchen and then come back and finish this trifle tomorrow morning is that I'm going to make the custard and then I, I'm going to put that also in the fridge to let it chill. You can hear the football in the background so do excuse the noise. Um, so I'm going to get the custard going. Let me show you. So for the custard, I'm doing another shortcut. I have got here 80 grams of ready custard powder you get in a little box. I'm going to add 50 grams of caster sugar to that for the sweetness. And next, add a bit of milk. So now I'm going to add 1.2 liters of whole milk to this. So first I'm going to add just a little bit and stir it to a smooth paste so that fewer lumps are formed. Can you turn the heat on, whisk, whisk, whisk. Once you have a bit of a smooth paste, you add the rest of the 1.2 liters of milk. And this should take, just read the instructions on your custard powder tin, but this should take around five to six minutes to cook and thicken up. And for extra flavor, I'm going to add some additional on the top um, vanilla for more flavor. So I add a tiny bit of vanilla just to make it a bit extra special because obviously I'm using shop pot custard powder so it's a ready mix. You can make your own custard if you like but for the trifle I feel like you get the real kind of classic flavor with ready custard. Just give it five to six minutes to thicken up. It has been um, five minutes and it has thickened up really really well very very nicely and now I can take it off just turn the heat off I'm using a whisk so it doesn't have get any lumps if it does get lumpy you can just sieve it just pass it through a sieve so you get rid of all the lumps and you'll have smooth custard so what I am going to do is transfer this nice thick custard into a normal pan because this is too, too hot for me to do anything, which is why I have made this today, whereas I'm going to finish the trifle tomorrow. So what I am going to do is transfer it and straight away cover this with some cling film or baking parchment. I'm going to use baking parchment. So immediately just use some baking paper crunch it up, open it again and then put it directly on the custard. I'm just telling you this, if you've made custard before you'll know this but in case there's someone on here watching this video who's never made custard, if you don't put this film on straight away you will form a really thick creamy layer of custard which will be rubbery and that's what you want to prevent. So I'm going to leave this out for 5-10 minutes and then put it in the fridge. That's the custard done like I said make sure that you have covered it with either cling film on the surface let it cool down for 5-10 minutes before putting it in the fridge and then let the jelly set in a separate bowl and let the custard set in a separate bowl and then I'm going to finish it all tomorrow morning. Right good morning. Now it's time to finish uh, the, what did I make? A trifle. So um, I'm back from the gym and I thought that I've still got a few hours before I take the dessert for the dinner. So I'm going to finish the custard part and I'm so glad I did the custard last night because it would be completely chilled and uh, perfect for what I needed for next step. Right, I have to admit guys that I, <sighs> 
did make two batches of the jelly. So this is the one that I made and this is the custard that I made for it. But I made one more exact same um, quantities because uh, my kids want some and a couple of my friends love trifles. So I thought I'll make one more batch uh, but divide it into smaller portions so that I can give them some trifle as well so that's one portion and I made the second batch and the second batch I divided into three different bowls and I made another batch of custard for that so yeah I'm not trying to confuse you I'm just telling you if you see these bowls and you think why you just made one and where have they appeared from so I'm just trying to tell you where they have appeared from okay next step so next step we need some raspberry jam uh, because I have used berries so you could use raspberry jam strawberry jam or you could skip jam altogether and I'm using some shop bought cake um, because I need dense cake I can totally make it from scratch but like I said earlier in the video that I am going to make my life simple so this is Madeira cake which is much denser than a normal sponge really really dense which makes it perfect to sit in this trifle because we need to add it with the custard if you make a really light uh, vanilla sponge it's just going to disintegrate in the custard so you need that uh, body to sit in the custard right next step so here is the lovely Madeira cake what I am going to do is just slice it into half like I said this particular step is optional but I like to add it because it adds a bit more flavor into the cake and the pudding in general so I have got some raspberry jam here I'm going to spread some jam in here like I said you could use if you don't have raspberry you could use basically any berry jam so that it goes with the rest of the flavors of the trifle and then I'm going to sandwich it then I'm just going to chop it into smaller pieces so and then I'm just going to chop it like this so here is our jelly can you see it's set yeah okay now we add our cake if it breaks through and goes at the bottom that is absolutely fine I really don't stress about such small things because it's all lovely delicious food so it does not matter and now I've got one one piece left one so I'm just gonna break it and put it in <laughs> I can't wait for this pudding that looks lovely really really good so here is our custard and now I'm just going to loosen this up and now back to the bowl I'm just going to just make sure all of the cake is covered in the custard and that is why I wanted to do this a few hours before because I want the custard to soften the cake I'm just making sure that it goes in between all the these are little things right so I could just spread it on top it won't make any difference but I want it to seep in between the cakes pieces and kind of make sure that it is properly covered and sitting in this delicious vanilla custard and when you are sure that it's gone between the cake then just smoothen the top out there you go and then you can put this back in the fridge but before you put that back in the fridge okay I'm just going to use another this is beyond use and now I can't find more baking sheet I think I'm out of it so I try not to use cling film these days it's just for like emergency purposes anyways just make sure that you've put the sheet and sealed the custard you don't want a film forming on top and then this can go back in the fridge for a few more hours 
till I'm ready to put the cream on. And um, I just wanted to show what I've made the smaller ones for my friends and my kids. So this is exactly that. So I just wanted to show you that you can make smaller portions and or you could half the quantity and just make a smaller bowl instead. So I'm just going to repeat the same with these small little bowls. So I'm just going to make like a little compote kind of like a just for the thin layer to go on top of the custard so i've got oh god i don't know maybe four or five tablespoons of um, uh, raspberry jam basically i've emptied my jar goes into a pan and to this i'm just going to add a, a punnet of um, fresh raspberries uh, i think this is around 150 grams of raspberry and then i'm just going to cook this for five minutes to get the fresh raspberry slightly softened and kind of start to break up and while the berry is kind of cooking down i'm just going to whisk some double cream so for the cream i have got 600 ml of double cream and i'm just going to add a little bit of sugar icing sugar to this so depending on how sweet you want i'm just going to add three heaped tablespoons of icing sugar and then whisk this up so the raspberries have broken up. I'm just going to turn this off and let it cool down for five minutes. And I want to make it a bit more festive. So I'm just going to add some amaretto, which is almond liqueur. Two good tablespoon and now whisk it. That is delicious. I just had a little taste of this. Um, so I transferred the raspberry liquid in a wider pan because I want it to cool down. Otherwise, my cream will melt and my custard will get softer. So this has taken 10 minutes, but it has finally cooled down completely. And now I can pour this. So this has been in the fridge for last few hours. Now I will need the cling film. Now this you might think is an unnecessary step because I don't know if classic trifles, I haven't tasted this, but this cuts through the sweetness and I would say it's a it's a must. Sometimes you'll find like a thin layer of jam in it or obviously sherry is used and but I'm obviously not doing any of that and I'm just adding a thin layer of this because this will go beautifully. It's like a bit of freshness in the layers of custard and cream. Now comes the fun part so here's the cream and i'm not piping it i just want to kind of do big swirls so i just want to kind of put little clouds of cream on top if that makes sense so i'm falling short a little bit so i'm just going to whisk a bit more and then put on top of this okay guys i am ready i'm all dressed up in a little 70s inspired outfit because i am off to the christmas get together and with my friends and my 70s inspired dessert is ready it has been sitting in the fridge for the last couple of hours after I put the cream on. Um, so it's properly set. So it's looking pretty good. I am going to take this to the party and hope everyone will enjoy it. And I will take you with me to the party. I'll show you when I serve this to my friends. Let's go.